Do you run away from your office because there is so much clutter and disorganization? Do you know technology can support you to clear clutter but have no clue where to start? Did you know technology can support you in getting organized? Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we continue our focus on the home office. Whether you work from home, travel for business, or have a traditional office, learn tips to get organized and tech tools to support you in becoming clutter-free. Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., hear easy to implement tips on decluttering all areas of your life physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. Learn how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award winning professional organizer and coach. Julie is passionate about supporting people in clearing clutter so they can share their gifts with the world and live a more joyful and fulfilling life. Emily Parks is a productivity consultant and office organizer who founded Organized for Success LLC in 2007. She helps busy professionals and corporate teams use all their available resources to drive desired results, including the organization of their workspace, making workflow processes more efficient, delegation techniques, strategic planning, and implementing the most appropriate tech tools for PCs, Macs, Androids, iPhones, and much more. Emily is an Evernote Business Certified Consultant and a 2015 winner of the Triangle Business Journal's 40 Under 40 Leadership Awards. She is also a huge Wake Forest Demon Deacons and San Antonio Spurs fan. Welcome, Emily. Glad to be here today, Julie. Thank you for having me. All right, well, she's been our guest before, but let's get started because with Emily, you're going to have enough information probably last you for the next year. Emily, what are your favorite technology tips for helping people to get or stay organized in the office, whether it's a home or business office? Julie, regardless of whether you're looking for an email, an electronic document, or a paper file, it's easier to find what you need when there's less through which you're searching. Retain only what is accurate, applicable, useful, or bringing you joy. Then, when you're editing your office's contents, consider what can be easily found online. There's no need to clog up your space with things that you could easily find with a quick online search. You don't need to keep those yourself. And always take into account what legal ramifications would exist for either keeping or discarding a particular item. Then, speaking of searching for something, it's much quicker to find information in an electronic format than combing through page after page and paper files. The search capabilities provided by online file repositories like Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, iCloud, Spider Oak, SugarSync, or even your company's own server or shared files far exceeds what you can find page by page in a paper file. Therefore, I highly recommend using a scanner to convert whatever you can from paper to electronic. Whether you choose a physical scanner like Doxy, Fujitsu, or Neat, or you use an app like Scannable, the important thing is to convert what you can from paper to electronic. And then finally, as you're assigning homes to what items will remain within your workspace, keep in mind safety considerations. For example, Cords can be both a tripping hazard as well as a fire hazard, and any items that you have piled on your floor create quite the obstacle course for getting across your workspace, whether they're objects or tech gadgets. That is wonderful. I'm so glad you talk about safety because I'm kind of a klutz and tend to trip and I have to be very careful. Actually, right before we started this interview, I spilled my soda all over the desk. But hey, you know what? Sometimes it happens. I absolutely do. In the big scheme of life, it's not a good thing. And, and luck was on my side because I had a roll of paper towels here. So it, it all worked out in the end. 
Share with us some of your favorite tools to keep us organized and cluttered in the office. Well, since cords can create safety hazards that need to be considered, I recommend that you cull together your mini cables within a cable box. It's a box that feeds your cords in from one side to the other side. And within the box itself, it has its own power cord that feeds out of one end while your cords are feeding in the other end. This way you don't have all the cables all over the place. They're all culled up and rounded around in this particular cable box. Then for those cords that are hanging off your desktop, so they're on the edge of your desktop and you use them to plug into your laptop or you use them to plug in and charge your smartphone or your tablet or maybe you have it as an extended USB port that you only need for certain times or whatnot. Well, when those cords are not plugged into your particular devices, they can easily slip off the edge of your desk. Well, you don't want to have to go digging down the other side of your desk to find those cords or replug them in or move them around. So consider cable drop cord clips. You actually stick these. They have a sticky back on them. You stick them directly onto your desktop, and they will grasp those flyaway cords. They're very easy to feed the cords through. They're gripping teeth up at the top, and you can pick from black or white depending on what would work best within your office space. Then, as you're converting paper documents into electronic, it's vital to have a scanner that effectively supports your particular efforts. So I recommend that you have a standalone scanner rather than using a multi multi-purpose printer. Most office spaces have the multi-purpose printers where you've got printer, copier, scanner, fax, or things like that. Well, they don't provide the same quality of a scan, and they have more hiccups, technologically speaking, than a standalone scanner would have. So a lot of times, I will recommend that people go with a portable scanner. Um, Doxy is one that I prefer because it does have... Wi-Fi support so that I don't actually have to plug it into my computer every time I'm scanning something. If I have my DoxyGo scanner in my car, I can just feed the document through the DoxyGo scanner and through Wi-Fi, it will send that document to my online file repository. But folks also like tabletop options. And if you prefer a tabletop option, Neat has some excellent options. Um, Neat Desk is the one that I use in my office, but a lot of people have converted to Neat Connect because then Neat Connect will automatically send it to the Neat Cloud server. But either one, whether you use a mobile option or a desktop option, either of these is an excellent scanner-only device that focuses on efficiently and effectively providing you with an electronic version of that information you're trying to retain. I was just going to say, I wanted to comment because if you're listening on the podcast, you can't see this. They both look very lightweight to me and pretty compact for usually when you think of, you know, we just got a new printer. It's kind of bulky and big. So they look like that one you looks like it'd be easy to keep in your car. It looks lightweight and compact. Absolutely. Any of the mobile options, whether you go with the Fujitsu ScanSnap, the DoxyGo, which is the one that I just showed on the video that we're shooting, or um, Neat Receipts is the neat version of the portable scanner. Any of those is going to be compact, lightweight, and easy to take with you, keep in your car, have with you between mobile offices, or have it at your client's office, wherever you might need that scanner. The the desktop versions like Neat Desk, uh, Neat Connect, things like that, they're not as portable, but it's not like trying to pick up and move your multifunction printer would be. It's definitely more functional from that standpoint. Absolutely. Great, great clarification. Excellent. Well, you were groovy, but I like to hop in there. And uh, I actually have the cable drop cords that you have because you recommended that. I don't know if it was on the show or just working and knowing with you. So I got the colored ones because I like bright colors. Excellent. Yes. I, I love the options that they have to fit each person's individual office space because you want your office space to 
speak to your personality and for you to feel comfortable in the office space so you can be most productive. Now, those are options for converting paper to electronic, but as you and I both know, some items just cannot be converted to electronic form. And for those, I want you to remember that horizontal is hidden and vertical is visible. So using a desktop filing unit is extremely helpful in these situations. Um, that way you have a vertical solution where you can keep items that require action or that are related to current projects front and center in your line of vision on your desktop or in a corner or whatever, but easy access. It's great to put files in a drawer, but sometimes out of sight is out of mind. And we also want to make sure that those action items are easy to access. Your file box could be as simple as Target's Room Essentials that comes in clear acrylic or as intricate as the Container Store's Nest Collection, which has nice designs on it. But the key is to find whatever solution best matches your personality and your overall workspace dynamic. Alternatively, the Container Store offers stacking mesh file crates. They are they're larger than a lot of the uh, tabletop file holders and you can actually add wheels to the bottom of them so these can slide right under your desk they're not as visible and in in your vision line but they offer quick convenient access I have clients that especially in their home offices might not have a file cabinet designated for their files but they need a place to keep those vertical files hanging ready for quick access and this gives a good solution we don't have to have built-in files you don't have to have file drawers that you bring in this is something you can pick up quickly and simply from the container store they offer the wheels that you can add onto it right there and they have the tool in the wheel set to screw them in the bottom of the the mesh file crate so it's really really simple for most of for us. most of us Oh, <laughs> that's true for most of us. And with that in mind, I do recommend the one-third cut colored files from Office Depot. What I really like about these is that when you open them up on the inside, it is a lighter color than on the outside. So it makes it easy to know that, yes, I am actually putting that piece of paper in the file instead of having it go between the files. Ready to change your life? Are you ready to release all of your clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual? Our new Declutter Your Life video series is a how-to, go-at-your-own-pace course to guide you through the process of clearing clutter. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. And color can be such a powerful tool in boosting your productivity. When you're putting an undesirable task into that color that you really love of a file folder, well, then that task is not quite so undesirable anymore. Also, it, the color enables you to group related files together. So my sample that I take around usually to show people shows that my yellow folders are action items. My green folders are client folders. My purplish are project folders. And I try to make sure that within the color that I pick, I pick the same tab position for that so that when I'm looking for the particular file, my eyes aren't bouncing back and forth amongst the tab, the tab positions. I pick the tab position, I look straight up that line, and I can more easily find the specific file I'm looking for. I love that. I love I'm that. Fan, I'm a fan of color coordinating. color coordinating. I love color from a personality standpoint, but I love color even more from a productivity and driving behavior standpoint. It's truly amazing how much it can impact our productivity. If you see any leopard print files, you need to let me know. I have yet to find those. I will definitely keep an eye peeled for that because I'm always seeing unique patterns. So you never know when I might come across an animal print. But I also don't want you to neglect your walls and the backs of your doors. 
one of the greatest tools from an office organization standpoint is actually an over-the-door shoe holder. Amazing. Who would have ever thought that you'd be using an over-the-door shoe holder in an office scenario? Well, these can make a great solution for containing those office supplies that you choose to keep within your workspace. Alternatively, the con container store offers a fabric wall mount magazine organizer. Green is my color, so I do prefer the green version, but they have them in orange and brown and all sorts of different colors. You can hang this on your wall, and each of these pockets makes a great place to keep that week's go-to file folders in an easy to access, readily attainable place where you can grab the project folder as you need it for the week, or you can grab the client folder as you're headed out the door to meet with them. Plus, any pair of wall-hung file pockets is a phenomenal tool to add an inbox and outbox to your office. I really like these magnetic wall pockets from the container store, but Staples, Office Depot, Target, Walmart, any of those can have all sorts of different pockets that can hang from your wall that offer great solutions, whether it be your assistant brings you your mail or you bring the mail in from the mailbox that needs to go there. You may have the outbox be things that go to other places like go to the mail, or it could be an outbox for things that need to be scanned into an electronic format. But making sure that you have that inbox and outbox readily available will contain the clutter and help you eliminate any excess. Throughout this process, I do suggest that you focus on functionality more so than aesthetics. But I do understand that there are plenty of options in which your storage solutions can look just as good as they function for you. For example, when you're grouping items together for an ongoing project, you might want to consider a semicolon document box. I have these set up with labels on them so that when I open them up, the lid is attached. I can pick whatever color I choose. So I try to alternate colors between different projects. And it makes a great place to hold all of the contents together for whatever project I'm working on at that point in time. If it's an ongoing project, I may want to wait to scan in the, the details of it to when I've wrapped up the project. And this gives me a great way to keep it all contained so that when I'm ready to use it, I grab the box, I pull it out on my desk, and I hit the ground running. Alternatively, you may have magazines that you read. There are, um, there are applications where you can read these magazines on your tablet, your smartphone, the web. Next Issue is a great way to eliminate some of that reading that would happen on paper and so maybe you cut back on those magazine subscriptions but I know I really like the feel of the paper as I'm reading magazines and so I still subscribe to magazines and I like having that paper version that I can pull out read tear out articles that I need to scan in that I want to keep but at least flip through and have the texture of the magazine and things like that well I don't want those spread out all over the place. It's important to me to contain what I retain. So orange Poppins stacking letter trays are another aesthetically pleasing tool that helps me to contain those, but also adds a pop of color within my workspace. Bright, vibrant, um, glossy feel to them, so it kind of adds an extra pizzazz. But any sort of stacking letter tray gives a great option to contain those unread piles of magazines. And the great thing about a container like this is once it's full, you have to do some editing of the contents in it. So, you know, when this is about to topple over, I got to read those magazines and send them to the recycling pile. Further, once you know if your personality is more out of sight is out of mind or in view creates visual clutter 
you'll be able to customize your solutions to your specific personality and you'll know whether a solution like this it's going to be out and visible like a stacking letter tray or some of the desktop file folders we've talked about would be a good fit versus making sure that it's in a drawer or a, or a closet or things like that also while you're organizing and decluttering don't forget that there's no right or wrong verbiage to use when labeling balance carefully between generic and specific to enhance your effectiveness for example miscellaneous is like that black hole that can contain just about anything so it can be an art form to make sure that you have enough storage solutions for everything you need whether they're emails that you're retaining in personal folders electronic documents that you're keeping on an online file repository or on your hard drive or even those physical and paper objects that we keep in our office. You wanna make sure that you have enough storage solutions for everything you need, while not having so many that potentially create duplicates or that you struggle to put something away. My bottom line is, if you struggle to determine where something should be kept, you open that email, you read it, you said there's not an action I have to do with this, they're not looking for time on my calendar, but I do need to retain this. If I struggle to figure out which folder I'm filing that in, how will I ever be able to find those contents later when I need them? That's especially pressing when you're talking about a physical object or a paper, uh, paper file because you don't have that electronic search option. For labeling, one of my favorite tools is Dymo's Letter Tag. It's fairly self-explanatory with the power on button, the letters where you type them out, and then the print button. And so it makes it easy for me to label things to know what I have and see at a glance where to find what I need. Still, one of the best tools that I have found for organizing and decluttering remains Evernote. Unlike online file repositories, this tool allows me to convert the ele electronic format of so many more things than just documents. Um, Evernote gives me one username and one password to access all my information synced across all my devices, including typed text, checklists, web clippings, audio and video recordings, as well as those documents that could be held in an online file repository. With Evernote's unbelievable search capabilities, which don't just search the title of a note or the notebook in which I've stored it, but they also search all the content in the body of the note, and they search any tags or words in the URL that I've associated with it. With that unbelievable search capability, I can find exactly what I need when I need it and I'm able to upload the extensive list of different content types from various different methods whether it's emailing content into my Evernote account scanning content into it or just clipping it directly off the internet it also enables easily sharing that content with others to boost collaboration so there simply isn't a replacement for what Evernote does for my decluttering and organizing of electronic information. Finally though, if you implement a cloud-based backup solution, you can eliminate that lovely external hard drive that's either sitting on your desktop or stored somewhere in your office that you must remember to plug into your computer for actually saving your information. Instead, a cloud-based backup solution will automate saving your data. There's less human error, which is always a good thing. And there are so many options to consider, like Backblaze, Carbonite, CrashPlan, and Mosey, just to name a few. Outstanding. And I'm a huge fan of Evernote. I've taken Emily's classes, which have been very helpful. And to me, yeah, it can do all that stuff. But the best thing is a search capability because it, for, for me, it's foolproof. And if it's foolproof for me, then it's probably foolproof for 99.99% .99 of the people in the world. Ready to change your life? Are you ready to release all of your clutter? 
physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, our new Declutter Your Life video series is a how-to, go-at-your-own-pace course to guide you through the process of clearing clutter. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Any last tips to eliminate office clutter? Yes, I do have a few things I want to share with folks that might be very helpful. First, do not hesitate to be creative. If you limit your storage solutions used in your workspace to what stores often consider office supplies, you are missing a world of options. There are countless uses for the container store's plain old shoe boxes. They are clear, they have a clear lid, they are simple, they are basic, but they are amazingly powerful. That little box can be used for storing all sorts of extra items, whether it be accessories for your mobile devices, cords, cables, uh, or promotional products, or office supplies, or whatever. But And they can be purchased in a value case of 20 to save you money. Also, fabric bins are an excellent option for culling together computer accessories, cables that are not currently in use. And although these bins are typically not considered storage solutions for your office, they can be stashed on your office shelves to add a pop of color or just a different texture to your workspace. It's really nice to have that different texture of the, the fabric of the bins to kind of offset all the paper and boxes and wood and metal and things that we typically have. Plus, whether it be from Target or the Container Store, there are plenty of labeling options. I like knowing what's in the bin from a glance because when I'm looking for that cable or I'm looking for that extra keyboard, I want to be able to glance up at the shelf and be able to tell, oh, that's the bin that it's in. Or I could have an assistant go grab what's needed and because I've labeled it clearly, they know what's going on. You've got colorful label options, you've got not so colorful label options, but there are options and that's always good to designate exactly what's inside. Even bathroom storage solutions prove to be excellent options for the office. A cotton ball and swab organizer can be great for pins, uh, pencils, Sharpies. It's a great way to keep them contained. Um, an organizer for medicine bottles can work really well for those dust off sprays that we use on our computer keyboards. You can easily plop them into that so they line up nicely and stay contained. It also helps to keep them from falling over. And even a vanity organizer can corral those sticky notepads or paper clips or rubber bands or whatever odds and ends office supplies might be rumbling around in your drawers. You can contain those within these great options so they're easily accessible and then will help with decluttering. I'd encourage everyone, if you're listening to the podcast, we also have this on YouTube just because it's fun and you get to see stuff and there's lots of good color here. Thanks, Julie. That's a good point to make. And um, second, as you're editing the content of your space, I really want you to think about what tech functionality can be consolidated for fewer devices. Maybe instead of... Um, multiple devices, there's one device out there that could do the plethora of things that those individual devices could do. And then for that technology that's no longer needed, what can be sold or what could you recycle? In Raleigh, we have anything with a plug for electronics recycling, while Cramden Institute is available in Durham. But a simple online search can bring up whatever resources are most applicable for our listeners specific location. If you'd prefer to sell your technology online, Gazelle or Nextworth 
are definitely options to investigate. And there are plenty of links on my website's resources page. So be sure to check that out too. It's a great place to find ways to sell, recycle, or offload some of those unwanted tech tools. And then finally, as you determine that you don't need to keep something, consider how you can make sure it doesn't arrive back in your space again. There are plenty of websites that are designed to eliminate junk mail. That means I don't want this person to send me this again and they can't send it to you because you've unsubscribed from their list. 41pounds.org, catalogchoice.org, dmachoice.org, and proquo.com are just a few different options for ways to eliminate junk mail. However, you might prefer the Paper Karma app where you pull out your smartphone, once you've opened the app, you simply take a photo of that unwanted mail and you no longer receive it from that, sem that sender. So simple, straightforward, but eliminate a lot of that clutter through using these technological sources. I have Paper Karma. I used to get, and it had this one, it was the heaviest catalog I'd ever seen called Uline or something. It weighed like 10 pounds. Karma app, book, took it off, and then I don't get it anymore. Success. That's awesome. Okay. Please share with us today three takeaways from today's podcast on all the great tools you mentioned today. First, it is easier to quickly find what you need if there is less stuff to dig through when you're looking. If you can limit what you keep to what is accurate, applicable, useful, or bringing you joy, it will boost your productivity. It helps you waste time, waste less time, and it lowers your stress because you're not freaking out that I know it's here somewhere, I just can't find it. How often do we have a bin full of cables that we have no idea what devices they are associated with? If you take time to figure out which cord works with which device, you can edit out those contents that are no longer needed and you have fewer to dig through to find the one you need. As you're editing the contents of your space, I want you to be strategic about what to recycle, shred, donate, or sell. Second, it's easier to find content in an electronic format than paper files. So please scan whatever you can of what is to be kept. Understanding that not everything can be electronic, but the more that we can scan into an electronic format, the more we can utilize the search capabilities of the tools that we have. And also maybe utilize online search to find what we need instead of keeping it within the space constraints of what we're using. Third, whether it's email, electronic documents, paper files, or physical objects, contain what you retain. Assigning specific homes to what's kept where you group like with like and use color as well as labels to aid your productivity. It's amazing what color and labels can do as we contain what we retain to really make it easier to get things done. Outstanding, I believe that. It's amazing to me people that either A, don't label, or have handwriting like me, and that you're like spending minute, what did I say, what did I write down? Absolutely. All right, Emily, share all the good stuff about your website, what's going on, classes, books, whatever you'd like to share. On my website at organizeforsuccess.biz, you can connect with me on social media, link to my blog posts, which feature free tips, tidbits about implementing the resources for driving your desired results, whether it be with your workspace, your technology, however you choose to make your time matter. Then, if you're seeking one-on-one -on -one consulting, consider my pit stop package or my technology tune-up, where I work with you face-to-face -face or via video conference to ensure that you are utilizing all available tools to organize for your success.
Under upcoming events on my website, you'll be able to see what courses I'm offering um, through North Carolina State University's Technology Training Solutions Unit, as well as any workshops I'll be offering at executive office suites and across the Raleigh and Triangle area. Plus, if you don't find what you're seeking, let me know via the contact information at the bottom of each page. I can customize something for your specific needs. Each day, we are gifted with only 1,440 minutes, and I can help you make every minute matter. I succeed when you succeed. So together, let's make sure you're as productive as you can be. Fantastic. Thanks again for all your wonderful tips. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for letting me share the information with everybody, Julie. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Thanks for listening to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of our 10 clutter-free living tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's services, including coaching, classes, affirmations, aromatherapy, and her unique How to Declutter Your Life course and more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Don't forget to subscribe and join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.